victory campaign. Are you feeling the victory? This is the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I am Pastor Terry Copeland Pearson. I am, uh, what, what am I? Maybe I should have asked somebody else. I'm not sure. I'm here, though, leading pre-service prayer, and it's a great honor for many reasons. It's always an honor to do anything with my dad. So I was remembering when I was in college, and, it, you know, up until I went to college, I didn't know anybody really knew who Kenneth Copeland was, you know, maybe in our meetings, and they weren't all that big. But a word spread around campus at ORU that Kenneth Copeland's daughter was there. And so it was kind of a hot thing for a few, few weeks there. And so people are calling and so forth, all that. And so my resident advisor said, oh, that just must make you feel so bad. Don't be discouraged, Terry. God loves you for who you are. And uh, you need to find your own identity. And she went all, I said, oh, fooey on that. I said, if I was anybody but Kenneth Copeland's daughter, nobody would give a hoot that I was here. And on top of that, nobody would be asking me for prayer or asking me to come do their, their wing devotions. I said, as far as I'm concerned, they can put it on my tombstone. Here lies Kenneth Copeland's daughter. Does it make any difference to me? Are you kidding? And with eyebrows like this, it's hard to run from anyway. Praise the Lord. So I'm honored to be here with him. And I tell you what else, I am honored to be here with you. I'm honored to be in the nation of Canada. I'm honored to be here again in Calgary. I'm honored to be with you. But most especially, I'm honored to go to the throne with you. You know, it matters who, do you, who you go to the throne with. It matters because some people, it was said of Sister Jeannie Wilkerson, there was a word of the Lord that came to her from someone else, and, and the word was, heaven knows you here. They know when Jeannie Wilkerson came before the throne. Well, I believe that before this time is up, that heaven knows we're there. Amen? Faith makes a difference that way. Now, I hope you remember, but in case you don't or you haven't heard, the Lord said to me several years ago, there's something about it. When people who know how to use their faith come together to pray with that specific purpose. And those of you that are here right at the beginning, I know you're here to pray. I know you came to be a part of what God's doing in this meeting. And there's no investment like a prayer investment. Even your financial investment, your time investment, your study investment, all that you invested just to be here is all kicked up a notch by the time you, when you, you invest your prayer time and you invest your heart in it. Now we've been talking about the ministry of the prophet. How many of you heard that uh, just come out in Brother Copeland's message this morning? Did you hear that? Hallelujah. I did not talk to him about this. I don't know if he heard what we said this morning about it. I don't, I don't know. But he, obviously he hadn't intended to preach on it, but I'm glad he did. I learned some things. Now in Luke chapter 3, we were looking at the, the prophetic ministry of John the Baptist. And we went through the scripture, and it shows how he talked to and was assigned to different realms of people. That's a great word. And it helps us to realize some things, uh, even in our uh, political realm. Sometimes we want to vote and elect people that are just like us. But we need people who are anointed and equipped and called to operate in a realm that we are, for the most part, unfamiliar with. You know, I don't operate in that realm all the time. And so it's good for us to have people that operate in that realm, but it's good for us to know how to pray in that realm. Well, thank you, brother. That's very good. Looks like somebody went shopping for me. No, I know what those are. So praise God. So anyway, he lists these realms, and the one that we talked about this morning, which I didn't even think about it when we were talking about it till afterwards, but John the Baptist, it says, the multitudes asked him. So that was the group number one, the general public. And then the tax collectors came to him. So he spoke into the financial realm. And it was a move of God that got him out there. 
And they said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And it was his teaching ministry that was injected and injected the prophetic office into that financial realm. Then he goes on to say, and those serving as soldiers also asked him, what shall we do? So there was a move of God that he, God intended in the military realm and in all the effects of it. And so by the grace of God, by the working of God, John office, the door opened for him to speak into the military realm. And then it goes on, then rather in uh, Matthew chapter 3, and it mentions another group in the same account of this, but in Matthew 3 it mentions yet another group, and that was the Pharisees and the Sadducees, or the religious world, the, the people of the book. Now we know there was corruption in all those areas at the time. We know that from history and from scripture. But I wanted to talk to you about the, both of those categories for a few moments. The Sadducees and Pharisees and the soldiers, the military. Well, in the military, I wanted to give you an example of something with Brother Copeland. It's just one example. Uh, but a number of years ago, back in about 1982, somewhere along about 82, the Lord told my dad to begin to minister to and welcome home the Vietnam soldiers. Now, I don't know how it was for you in Canada, probably very similar to what it was in the States, and they were not welcomed home at all. As they began to come back in the early to mid, then on into the later 70s, as they were uh, evacuated and brought out, they were spat on, called names, and many of them, it was, it, you know, and that war was so... Uh, tragic and traumatic it was it was spiritual it was darkness it was political it was it was an awful situation and then to come back here and to be called all kinds of horrific names and then just brought right back into a culture of drugs drug abuse death suicide it, it was an, a, a horrible dark time for us in the states was it that way in Canada Raise your hands for me and wave at me if it was. Was it? Did you have that issues here? Some of you experienced that or saw that. Well, it was a very dark time there in the United States. So we're talking 1982 into 1983. So this was uh, really still, uh, still happening, um, even though the soldiers were home from Vietnam. The attitude towards the military was still very vicious and demonically uh, provoked. So the Lord said to my dad, begin to minister to them and tell them, welcome home, soldier, job well done. And so we created this big banner across the back, and dad would just simply stand up, talk a little bit about the war, talk about the nature of war and some of the other things that were characteristic of the Vietnam era. And then he began to tell them what the Lord had told him to say. And it, then he would end with this, this uh, he would have them all stand, and he would pray for them, and he would take authority over the tormenting spirit uh, in their night and in their sleep and the, the abuse and the misery that they'd had. And, and there were a number of soldiers in our congregations at that time. And of course, most of them still pretty young, having come back from that war. And then he would say, welcome home, soldier. And this banner would drop down, and it said, welcome home, soldier, job well done. And everybody cheered and welcomed and applauded and glory to God, it was wonderful. And we got reports from soldiers for, for years to come. And he, he must have done that for a couple of years, I think, in all of our meetings. And we got reports back, testimonies. The nightmares have stopped. The night sweats have stopped. Uh, I'm freed. I'm delivered. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. That was a wonderful thing. But the prophet's ministry, though, did a lot to minister to those men and women. It also reached out into that realm and went out beyond even those that heard him speak. We had several thousand people in our meetings back then. It would be a nice large crowd, maybe 5,000, 6,000 at a time or more. But nowhere, and we probably did it on television a time or two on our broadcast. But all of a sudden, about that time, there began to be a surge of, of this sudden bright idea that we should do something for the Vietnam veterans. And the idea came about the Vietnam Memorial. 
and they began to raise money for that memorial and they did a small traveling version of that memorial that went all across the United States. And as that memorial traveled across the United States, there was a wave of change of attitude across the whole country. All of a sudden, war movies are coming out in defense of the military. War movies that were showing what those soldiers went to. And there was empathy, there was sympathy, there was ministry, there was an increase, there was outreach. And this ministry of deliverance went and spread all across the country and continued on for years and years and years. And our nation has, it, our nation was delivered because that's a dishonor. That's a dishonor before God to treat the military that way. And so that, that whole thing was healed. And the, the, as far as that nationwide attitude against the military. So have we had un, uh, uh, unlike, disliked, unfavorable military situation since? Yes, we have, but never have we had our nation as a whole stand against the military like that era. So do you see the work of the prophet? Do you see what happened? It wasn't just the, the words that, that people heard. It, the, the voice of the prophet reaches into realms and it shifts and it changes things. It causes things to happen. Jeremiah was a great prophet and the scripture says in Jeremiah that God told him to take the cup of his judgment to every king on the earth. Now, how's he going to do that from a jail cell? But by the, by, by the spirit and by the declaration of his words, he began to declare the kings over all the nations that were known at that time. He declared the, the kings over all the islands, over all the coastlands. He named them all and said, drink of the cup of the wrath and the judgment of God where Israel is concerned. And that, that judgment went into effect and stands to this day because of the word of a prophet, whether anybody heard him or not. It's the voice of God in the earth that changes things. Now the thing that empowers that voice, the thing that, that draws that voice out is the prayers of the saints. As we pray for our nation, as we pray for the will of God, I think about the Iron Curtain in Eastern Europe and how the saints had prayed for 70 years for that wall to fall. But there was a group of people that got a hold of Brother Hagin's book on the authority of the believer. And when they got a hold of that and they began to speak and pray in faith at a different level, what well, things are happening. The, the, the pressure was on. So what happened? All those prayers were, were put, building up a spiritual pressure against a spiritual dam. There was a spiritual wall that was there, not just concrete barbed wire, but it was a spiritual wall that was surrounding. And so the saints are praying. I remember as a little girl in Sunday school, praying for the Christians behind the Iron Curtain. And so people were praying, but those believers got a hold of that word of faith, began to pray and take authority over that and command that wall to come down. Well, they prayed and they prayed and we're praying 70 years of prayer. But one morning at Eagle Mountain International Church, all of these many years ago, whatever year that was, 1990-something, the three was it? And he, my dad stepped up, I believe it was maybe even Christmas morning. He stepped up on the platform and gave a faith command for that wall to come down. And you know what? It was down, it was down in a matter of a few weeks. 70 years, and, and, and lots of things came down with that wall. Lots of things came down, and the, the gospel began to be preached all over Russia and Eastern, the Eastern European countries. Well, did it come down just because the prophet prophesied? Well, let's put it this way. The prayers of the saints put a demand that put a, and requ and a requirement for God to move, and he moved through the voice of the prophet. Now, without it, would that wall have come down? I don't know, but God chose to do it that way. God chose that a prophet stand up and declare it, and it was a prophet anointed and equipped to speak into that realm, and by the authority of the Almighty, spoke, and by God's voice, that wall couldn't do anything but come down. And it came down just the way those believing saints prayed without any bloodshed. 
That's a miracle. It's a miracle. So I wanted you to see that this is the operation of the prophet's ministry. Or Roberts, a prophet of God. 